Okay, uh, we're here to talk about qualitative content analysis. And if you've downloaded the starter package, which is up on the website, you'll see that the zip file contains these three things, these three files here. There's a null data file, which contains empty tables for you to put your data in. There's a sample data file, which is uh, for us to play with. And there's the text of an interview, which we're going to add in and uh, use to demonstrate how interview analysis is done. Let's have a look at the sample data and see what happens. The uh, analyzer provides access to the functionality through a control panel and there are five levels of, of activity that you'll want to get involved with. Basic data management, doing the actual analysis, browsing around the analyzed data and producing charts and reports for your, uh, your thesis or your written work. And the fifth is a little bit obscure, but you can choose the words you use to describe your metadata. If you're doing interviews, you'll want to talk about interviewees and interviewers. If you're talking about document analysis, you'll have author and reader. Do you see what's going on? It depends on the kind of research you're doing. Go there, play when you're ready. The basic data is quite simple. You need to add details of the researchers. In this case, there's a team of one, and that's me. In the uh, research, there are, at the moment, two respondents. There's uh, an engineer who works to teach senior citizens, and there's a teacher who works in a primary school. Actually, it's a pre-primary school. Let's just correct that. Pre-primary. OK, so the third uh, table of basic data represents the ca categories that we're looking for. Here we have five categories we're looking for. Evidence of information technology or systems or organization processes, organization benefit and organization strategy. These are the five things we're looking for examples of or evidence of in our research data. Let's go in and see how the analysis is done. <coughs> the first step is to take the whole interview and div divide it down into what I call chunks. Here's the senior citizen uh, example where the engineer is teaching senior citizens how to use their computers. And it seems that he's produced six chunks. And what we have done is to take the text of the interview. And we've seen here that the question and the answer represents one component in the conversation. So we copy that over and call it a chunk. The second question and the second answer becomes the second chunk. Do you see? the same text on either side. The interview with the pre-primary kindergarten teacher, uh, same story except now we have seven chunks. So there was a bit more said on that side than there was with the senior citizen. Of course what you want to see is how we make a new interview. Let's make a new interview space there and go back to the distribution. Here's the text of the um, third interview and I copied it into the clipboard. I've just pasted all of the text into the space on the left hand side here. I'm going to give this a proper name. Let's call it a University Systems Management. Whoops. Um, we need to know who the respondent is and it was a, a system manager. Now the, syst the system notes that the systems manager is not one of the two respondents that we have. It says, do you want to add this to the list? And so we say, yes, please. That's a third respondent. We have to say who's doing the research. That's me. And uh, then we can start to work with the text. Let's take out the stuff that's just uh, supernumerary. The technique I like to use is to, to uh, actually cut the text out of the left-hand side and paste it into the right. And that way, uh, you never lose your place. <laughs> you see, uh, let's get rid of the spaces there. Um, if you don't do that, then you'll find that you're wondering exactly how far you got. There you are again. We're getting there. Uh, the fourth one and the fifth one. And uh, <coughs> there is all of the text of the interview done. Now, if you want to, of course, you can copy all the text back in again. Yeah. So now we have a complete record of the whole interview and the six chunks that we've just created. Didn't take long, did it?
Now the other boxes up here are like optional, but it'd be really good to have the date in there. So let's put a date in, um, the place, the group. The group might be the interviews you did before and the interviews you did afterwards. The place obviously is the place. The type of interview, well it might be, an, it might be a structured interview, it might be a focus group, it could be an open conversation. Details of the organization is always useful. Uh, let's just skip over all of that uh, tedious detail and go straight to coding this third interview. Now we've added a new uh, frame on top of the one we were working with and here is the chunk which is the first chunk out of five for the third interview. And now we're looking to categorize stuff according to the three or four or five categories we chose to look for. Um, the first thing I see is the information system because I see the words learning management system. So I pop those words in there. I code it as an example of information system, uh, which they have referred to me. And it's a homegrown. Look, I see homegrown. Uh, immediately, I think that's pretty strategic because if, when it comes to learning management systems, it, most people buy them. But if this university has grown its own, that gives it real strategic potential. Then I see that in the answer, a lot of papers have been written about this uh, experience. And I think these guys are busy. This is a process in this university that needs to be noted. Um, then finally, um, on the basis of what we have learned here, I'm thinking, hey man, uh, that means there's real benefit. They've learned something. That's an example of a benefit. That's the first chunk done. Let's just stick with the text that he gave us. I see, ah, Innovation and Technology Learning Center. Let's pop that over there. For me, that um, feels like a, an organization resource. So I'm going to put the organization resource code. Oh, it's not in the list. We are invited to add it to the list. And now we have a list of six codes to work with, not just five. So it goes on. Uh, look, last year the focus was on improve the LMS. Yet another example of an organization process. And uh, processes can be administrative, whatever, he says. So there is yet another example of commentary about organization process. And so it goes on. It's as easy as that. If we then close these guys down and go onto the browsing, now we get some kind of a reward because we can jump about through the data as we want to. I'm going to suggest we have a look at the sources first. Here we are. We have three sources, the first, the second, and the third. And the text of the interview is given on the left. When you see in the browsing mode, when you see something pink, as it is on my screen, you can double click and it takes you to the record in question. Um, for example, if we go here, then we go to the chunk that is uh, the second, I think it was. And we learned that this is from this interview and it, it gave us coding of these things. But look, we forgot about the words. Shame. Let's go there. Let's do the words. All we have to do is go back here. And this fourth button is the one that will completely rebuild our word index. And when we go back into browsing our chunks, um, and we're looking for, let's say, I think it was this one we were looking at. So now we're looking at the uh, second chunk. Here are the words used. Here is the interview it came from. This is the denotatum. This is the coding. All is given you. You look at uh, the words, you think publication is interesting. Is this the, it is the only instance of the word publication in the whole of our data. If we look at the words by frequency, the most frequently occurring word in this data set is school. And here are the six chunks with the word school in it. Um, here's one of those chunks. You see, we can go around and round and around the data. And in short, we end up with a load of stuff open up on the screen. And what we've been doing is bouncing from the sources to the chunks. A source is many chunks. Then a chunk provides as many constructs, which are the link between the categories we're looking for and the chunks that they come from. And the words themselves, well, those are all of the words. And they come from the indexing procedure here. It's almost as simple as that. There are a few things I'm skipping over. But your ultimate reward, of course, is that you can produce nice charts for your written work. Um, here, the blue is the interview with the kindergarten teacher. The red is the interview with the uh, senior citizen. And the green is the emerging detail 
of the interview with the university systems manager. The same data can be provided as a table, uh, which is like that. And uh, if we want to create text for our theses, then the browsing is the stage when, particularly when you're looking through the chunks, you say, hey, God, this is a really interesting piece of text that we were given here. It's all about the future of education. Then we click on, oh, look at this. This is, no, not that one. This is another uh, look ahead. We, I'm inventing this, of course. So those three chunks we have chosen now. And because we have selected them, we can come here and we can send all of those chunks to the clipboard, open a copy of Word. Here's Word. Paste the guys in there. And now all of the chunks that we have selected are pasted in for us with full attribution as to who said it and uh, which interview, which place and what date. Do you see? I don't want to save that now. It doesn't really mean that much. It would mean something if you had done it. The control panel lets you go straight to the community website if you want to. That's perhaps that's where you uh, came from. <laughs> and let uh, me we'll just click that and see. This is the Qualinal Wikispaces.com welcome. In fact, you can recognize this chart. <laughs> this chart is of that data we've just been looking at. So this uh, website will keep you up to date and this is where you can download the stuff if you want to, as you probably already know. Let's uh, leave it at that, shall we? Thank you for listening. I hope it's useful. I hope it's helpful. Keep in touch with us. Tell us how you get on. Okay.